Have you ever heard about exploding USB-C port? Well, not literally like this animation, but still, today we're diving into some explosive IC news causing these USB-C port failures. So stick around as we unveil the culprit behind the MacBook Pro's USB-C flaw, affecting newer models like M1 Pro, M2 Pro, M3 Pro, and all the M Maxes as well. Picture this, you're innocently plugging in your USB-C hubs, USB-C drive, SSDs, hard drives, charging your Mac, and all kinds of hubs as well as external monitors like you always do. But little do you know that this single IC on the logic board is plotting some behind the scenes mischief and your logic board might just throw a little tantrum. Public service announcement, do not leave your USB-C device inside for too long or overnight. Then remove it after you're done. Keep watching if you want to know why, but you can close this video if you don't care or busy. So if you look at this logic board a little bit closer, the way USB-C works is by connecting this external peripheral device to this USB-C flex cable. As soon as you plug in this cable, this IC called CD3217 will immediately try to establish communication protocol with the external device. But in order for this process to be successful, this external device usually require 5V in order for it to at least turn on and complete the communication protocol check because USB devices are powered by 5V, right? So where is this 5V is actually produced and come from? Well, apparently it's not produced by the CD3217 but if you zoom out a little bit, you should see this tiny familiar IC that we're not going to name it for now and let's just call it a sacred IC. So this sacred IC is actually a buck converter that takes the 12V PP bus from the high side and step it down to 5V on the other side. Then, this 5V is going to be channeled directly to the internal MOSFET of the CD3217. When the MOSFET says, you shall pass, and only then the gate is opened, and the 5V finally reach external device. As the communication protocol finally completed, it successfully established some sort of handshake knowing what kind of external device is connected to the USB-C port, whether it's an SSD or hard drive, etc. And I think it's really worth mentioning that during this whole process, the CD3217 doesn't work alone. This is the overall picture of what we explained to you so far. But it has another whole set of gangs and friends on the other side of the chicken wing. If you zoom in, you will see one CD3218 for the MagSafe 3 charger and another two CD3217 for the rest of USB-C ports. So these four people actually communicate with each other the whole time inside the MacBook whether you shut it down or using it or whether you plug any MagSafe 3 charger or USB-C device. They communicate using the I2C protocol. So everything works really really great until another nightmare begins. <laughs> As you get these two burn marks, your MacBook will never turn on again. And that is simply because the M1 Pro refused to work properly when he sees one of his soldiers CD3217 died. And all the CD3217's comrades seems pretty sad about it too. And hence giving a non-functional, expensive MacBook to you. All of these adventures thanks to this single sacred IC that usually blows for no reason, killing the CD3217 by sending the 12V PP bus to 5V power rail. So this sacred IC has now turned to a cursed IC. It is a very well known and popular IC that has given us trouble since the 2018 MacBook model and this IC is the infamous TPS 6180. This is the IC that killed thousands of nuns in the 2018 and 2019 MacBook Pro by sending the 12V 
PP bus to kill all the nans on the low side and it's so common that we were able to create a complete guide video and rules of how to replace the dead nan SSD. And now they're trying to use this cursed IC on the newer model with Apple Silicon. So far, all these recorded cases were happening on the M1 Pro, M1 Max of 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook model. But as you look on the newer model like the 14-inch M2 Pro, you will see they are still using this lovely TPS 6180IC to power the right USB-C port. This also applies to the 16-inch M2 Pro or Max model. And unfortunately, this favorite booby trap IC can still be found on the newest M3 Pro or Max of 16-inch and 14-inch MacBook Pro. This problem has been discussed on several posters on the internet like the Batcaps forum where the logic board has no visible liquid damage that had both CD3217 and TPS6180 chips blown. Then someone from Germany emailed us a question regarding a missing TPS61 AD because you know someone tried to repair it before and it's not fixable. Then Rossman's forum also discussed the replacement of this blown TPS61 AD and the CD3217. We don't really have clue why Apple really loves this IC so much, but maybe we can understand better when you look at the left side of the USB-C circuit. Both of these CD3217 are taking 5 volt power from another IC manufactured by analog devices called LT8642. This IC has never blown yet in our history of repair and if you read then compare the data sheet and price, you will find that this LT8642 IC can deliver up to 10 amps of current but the TPS61 AD can only supply a maximum of 6 amps of current. So this different amps rating really does affect the pricing of each IC where you can see the LT8642 is approximately 2 times pricier than the TPS61 AD. And hence maybe that's why Apple still want to use the TPS since they're dealing with volumes and mass productions. Just imagine how much you can save on this IC choice alone. Next, let's talk about how to prevent this TPS from dying or maybe try to increase its lifespan. So we will begin with a simple experiment by plugging in USB device to this port and measure the presence of 5V volt voltage. So when nothing is connected, the 5 volt from TPS is not present obviously, but as soon as you plug in the USB device, the 5 volt begins to show up and power the external device. So let us use the light bulb analogy, right? And I know some of you will say, ah, oh, this analogy is lame and not accurate. But still, if you turn on the light bulb and never turn it off, you will expect to replace it for every 3 to 6 months depends on the quality and brand you buy. Then if you increase the brightness to the maximum, then the lifespan will decrease much shorter than 3 months. So the same thing happens to this IC if you let it work 24-7 all the time by leaving your USB-C device inside then 5V from the TPS will never turn off and it will be in a constant shake hand mode. <coughs> Just imagine if you shake someone's hand and don't want to let it go because you're lazy. This is true even when you close your LCD lid and put your MacBook to sleep. Here's the proof. So the 5 volt from TPS on the right side is still there even when you close your LCD lid only after you remove them then both ICs will be turned off. So make sure to unplug your USB device after you're done and do not leave your USB device inside. If you're still lazy and don't want to remove it, you can just shut down your MacBook instead of sleep. Because in the shutdown state, all the 5 volt USB rail will be turned off even when you left something inside. If you still don't want to do any of these cheapskate tips, then maybe you need to deal with this super expensive repair we're going to explain next. So to repair the whole issue is quite straightforward as you can measure the dead shot at the output inductor of the blown TPS 61AD. 0.002 means dead shot to ground and when you try to inject voltage to that rail, you will see the TPS is the hardest point in the thermal camera. This faulty IC can easily be replaced by another one since it is a non-programmable IC so you can simply remove the blown TPS from the footprint using the hot air gun then you can have the replacement IC from any donor boards of 2018-2020 T2 MacBook models or maybe you wanna buy a new IC from DigiKey then simply clean all the solder balls and solder a new one with the hot air gun. So you're done for this part and next, the dead CD3217. This is the one that will cost you a lot of trouble and money. You see, this IC looks pretty simple to remove, 
but you cannot take the donor just from anywhere. If you repair a logic board before, you will find that this IC CD3217B12 can be found in various Mac logic board from 2019 to 2023. Even though you see the physical footprint is basically the same, it was programmed by Apple to only work with certain models. But for the sake of science, here is the complete table of what we tested so far. If you pull out CD3217 from these two models, whether from A2159 Intel model or even the M1 A2338 MacBook Pro, we rebuilt the pulled out IC of the two models and solder it as usual using the hot air gun. What you will end up with is 5V at all 3 USB-C ports and all of them are not boosting to 20V. This is a sign of an incompatible CD3217 program being soldered onto the logic board. Then these two donors will not even work in the 16-inch M1 Pro model. So next, let's try our luck by using the donor from the A2141 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro. After soldering this donor IC into place, we finally got 20V boosting on the left ports of the logic board, but the single right port remains stuck at 5V when you plug in the USB-C charger. Since two ports on the left side boosting to 20V, we've decided to reassemble the logic board into the chassis and see if it's going to turn on. There you go, seeing the Apple logo usually the end of any video right? So we pass this MacBook to final QC department to see if everything's working good. Unfortunately, the report says that several USB-C ports could not read or find any USB device. We are using this USB 2.0 mouse to do this simple test. As you plug it into the lower left USB-C port, you can see the red LED light is functioning as usual. Then you can even control the cursor to move the finder window. But as you try to switch the cable to the upper left port, the mouse simply does not respond and not show any sign of red light. It doesn't matter if you try to reinsert the cable, but the problem stays the same. The same unfortunate thing happened to the right USB-C port where you cannot use it for anything. This is a bad sign that we are wasting our time trying to do this trial and error, so maybe it's a good idea to stop fooling around and finally try the donor from the A2442 14-inch M1 Pro. We don't have any choice but to sacrifice this overpriced iCloud locked M1 Pro 14-inch logic board. So it turns out to solve this issue, you need to actually pull this CD3217 IC from the same exact right wing of the M1 Pro generation. If you use the CD3217 from the left wing, it will not work at all as we had tried it before. So there you have it. Just buy this iCloud locked logic board from eBay just to pull this one single IC that you cannot program yourself. So don't be mad at a local repair shop if this is gonna be very expensive. So now, testing the USB-C ports again will give you a functioning lower left port, good upper left port, and the right USB-C port is working good as well. For further reading about CD3217 program, you can read this blog that discusses a little bit detail about how to reverse engineer the program inside the CD32 ICs. We have linked it in the description below. And today, we received this dead M1 Max logic board for repair and apparently the left CD3217 is also heating up in the thermal camera. So it seems that this CD32 IC by Texas Instruments is not really that robust either. It turns out that this customer never removes the external SSD from the lower left port causing continuous handshake and the CD3217 is working 24-7 all day long. While we try to fix this issue, leave your comments down below and we will read every single one of them. Then see you again at iBoff RCC channel, reverse engineering at its best.